a function is continuous at C if f of C is defined, meaning if you plug in C, you get an output. Okay? Obvious. Now, it's not continuous would look like this. Okay. F of C is defined. Is F of C defined at that hole? No, there's no output at that hole. Okay. Okay. So this is not continuous. This is the opposite of that definition. The second stipulation. The limit of as x approaches c of f of s exists, meaning the limit exists. For it to be continuous, it should have the limit should exist. An example of that not being working would be something like this. Does the limit exist? No. That's in a picture of not existing limit. Now you could also have an asymptote or an oscillation. But that's one example. Okay, the third stipulation for it to be continuous is that the limit as x approaches c is equal to the actual value. Meaning this. Does the limit exist? Yeah. But if the value is down there, does the value equal the limit? No. no. Okay. So, these three stipulations for something to be continuous must apply. These are examples of non-continuous. There are more examples, but these are examples of the opposites of these. Next. This is a minus. I know it's kind of hard to see. This is a plus. One-sided limits mean exactly what they say. They're sided. They're limits from one side. If you have a little negative right there, that is basically meaning you're taking the limit from the negative side of a graph. Got it? If you have a limit with C with a positive, that means you're taking the limit from the positive side. Okay? So positive means from the positive side, limit from the negative means from the negative side. All depends on what side you're taking the limit from. Normal limits like this come from both sides. Removable discontinuities. A removable discontinuity is that. That is basically a removable discontinuity. Or that. They're both the same thing. It's just this has a value as well. Those are both removable discontinuities. Basically, a removable discontinuity means you can factor or rationalize, cancel something out, create a new equation to fill in the hole. Those are removable discontinuities. The term is not very Im extremely important. It's just you'll see it and might get confused if you don't know that. La next, the existence of a limit. How do we know a limit exists? Well, a limit exists if you take the limit from the negative side of f of x should equal the limit as x approaches c from the positive side of f of x. A limit exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. Basically the definition of a limit is right there. A limit exists if the left and right side both agree and are equal. The book says it that this equals L and this equals L. I think that's stupid. Why don't you just say they're equal? So, this is the definition of the existence of a limit. They emerge and hit the same spot. And lastly, the intermediate value theorem, IVT. It's an existence theorem. It's basically saying if I have a point here and a point here, and it is, I'm making a continuous line. I cannot spell. Whoa. Okay. Continuous. Whoa. I should try. Okay. 
continuous line. That's the stipulation. It has to be continuous. To get from this point to this point, and I'm going to cross this line. Okay. To get from the green dot to this green dot and cross that red line, if the line's continuous, it has to cross at least once possibly twice. Okay? So, if continuous line, then crosses red line at least once. If it's a continuous line from A to B, then it will cross this red line, whatever red line is given, whatever line is given, at least once. It could cross more. It's just proving there's an existence of a point somewhere between these two points that will cross that line. It can cross more than twice. It can cross more than once.